everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make these super super pretty um, I'm going to refer to them as mini loopy boutiques um, It is actually the translation of Laco Baby But again, I'm not great at translating So this is a really cute one in light coral And this is one that I've turned into a little reindeer bow And these are both on nylon headbands I've actually been literally this morning i had a delivery this is an, an amazing freebie it's from nylon headbands uk and she's just sent me all these stunning nylon headbands and these are the super super soft really really flexible ones so like i said these are the really really nice ones that don't um sort of mark the baby's head when they're on the child's head so like i said they're so flexible and so soft um, I do sometimes have the other ones, like I said, sometimes when you order from places like Amazon and things like that, you get these ones and the difference in quality. They have like a ribbed feel texture to the material and they're a bit tighter. They're, they're larger, but they don't stretch as much. And like I said, they're just made of thicker material. And like I said, that does sometimes sort of mark the toddler's or baby's head. So like I said, I always prefer these super, super soft ones. And she is a supplier excuse me, of quite a few of the places at stock in the UK. So I'll put her link in the description below for you. And this is a super cute bow that we're making today. The headband stand is from AliExpress. It is from a few years ago. And I do believe Eva's bows and craft supplies now sells them as well. So I'll put the links to both of those in the description for you. So for this one, it is one inch ribbon that we're working with today because obviously it's going to be for a cute little baby. And we want four pieces of 22 centimetres and we're going to do two from the right and two from the left. And I have already marked these, so give me one second. So just to save some time, what I have already done is on my four pieces I've pinned in the center as you can see I have heat sealed all my ends and on two pieces on the right I have pinched this side and on two pieces on the left I have done a pinch this side and that is just to guide our pieces and all the measurements will be in the description below but they are here now. So one inch ribbon, four times 22 centimetres. We're pinning the centre. We're going to start two from the left, two from the right. And when we do our stitches, we're going to do four stitch drops, which will give us two creases on each piece. Um, I would always say this, when we do it, the most complicated part of this bow is getting your pieces in order. So what I would suggest doing is when we put them together on the thing, I'll pause long enough so you can pause and either take a picture or make sure you've got everything in the right place. And then we've got the base bow, which is a tailed simple loop bow. And I made a three inch temp, three and a half inch template, and it's 48 centimetres. And as you can see here, because I am a visual, very visual earner myself, I've made myself a little guide to show where I need to get the edges lined up so I know I've got my pieces in the right direction. And like I said, it says here, stitches go where the pins are facing down. And we need to make sure these flat sides are facing towards each or on the curves. And the colours that I used, and like I said, it's pale gold, which is 693 in the colour gross grain colour chart and the light coral which is 238 in the light grey uh, in the gross grain colour chart so there we go so we shall start now and I've also got my two pronged hair curling clips I used to hold everything in place so we're going to start the ones from the left first so you want to take this piece and like I said where that mark is we're going to curve that round So it's like this. So from here, curve it up so that pinch mark that we did is lined up with that centre pin. And then pin it so it's back in place and this is the look that you'll get. Now what you want to do is hold this very firmly. And we want to fold this so that edge is completely lined up with that edge of ribbon in that middle piece okay take this through that loop and bring this piece so it's now li nicely lined up 
with all the edges inside so all of those are lined up and you've got that edge that's lined up with those there and then we can repin our pin and the other thing I do to make sure all of these pieces because obviously they're pocketed and that bit slips sometimes I take one of my clips and I will clip that edge just so I know that those aren't going to move about and now we're going to do the same shape again from the left using that pinch as a guide bring it up to your pin repin it so where the centre is make sure that line is straight across there fold it from where that edge is straight across so you've got the nice even line still take that through the loop we've just made and then bring it back up so that that's straight and it's straight again that, uh, that edge too repin everything so it's all held in place and like I said if you feel like your ribbon's going to slip or anything like that you can take one of the clips and put it along that edge okay so those are our two pieces made from the, the left now we're going to do exactly the same thing but we're going to do it from the right again centre pin our pinch centre curve it round so from there down not up round and up repin that centre mark like so line your edge up so it's all completely even and then fold where that edge lines up over the top making sure that all of those are still completely lined up take that piece through the loop we've just made and bring that edge so that it's lined up against all those pieces in there all nicely sandwiched together repin all of your layers and again if you feel like this is going to slip or move down take one of your clips and clip that edge like so and there's another piece and then we're going to do another one from the right again turn it round so it loops up and that crease is dead centered to our center pin pin that through make sure the edge is all lined up fold that from where that ribbon joins up again all the edges nice and even pop that through that loop and bring that together again lining up all your edges so that that top layer on every single one is all balanced and all of the sides are all lined up like so as well and like i said take one of your clips like this now the key thing with these pieces is what you want is You have to give me a second. There we go. Right, so you want pins down. So your pins on all of these or your clips facing downwards, and you want these flat edges lining up together. So that's one set. And we want to do exactly the same with this one. Your pins should be facing down, and both of these flat edges where everything's sandwiched together are facing in towards each other because when we sew they will go nicely like this so i'll be sewing along this edge and then we can do it like this so there you go so if you're going to sew like this again pins facing all this direction to the right and like i said we want to start our stitches so we're coming in from this side and we go this so when we loop them turn them round they'll be in the circle in the loops in the right direction so like I said I'll leave that long enough so you can take a picture if you need to and again I'll just move them like this so you can see okay so like I said feel free to take if you're a visual learner 
feel free to take those photos and make sure you get them in the right place. And then I have got my extra strong Gutman thread and it is doubled and I have a longer than average needle. It's a sharp darning needle. And what you want to do is again, make sure all your edges are lined up and we're gonna go from above and we start at the point where all the layers join together and we're gonna do four, which is in, which is one, two, once you're happy, you can take your clip off, three, and your fourth one, we're coming up from beneath and again, we should be making sure we're catching all of those layers in that sandwich bit and the layers in between. There we go. Now I'd always say, just in case you've still managed to somehow get your combinations wrong, and it can happen, leave your pins in until you've got everything in place. And then if anything happens, all you have to do is cut your knot off and you can pull your stitches through and you can restart again without having to rebuild your bow together again. And as I have my dyspraxia, which means I struggle with my left and my right, I have to really pay attention when I do these because like I said, it does complicate my brain sometimes so when we start the second one obviously we've done the pin there we started on the curved side on this next piece we start on the flat edge and again it's from above where all the joined layers start make sure you've caught all of them one two three four okay Just go a bit closer to the edge. So there's those two pieces as you go, two flat edges together. And on the next set of two, again on this one, you start on the bit where the curved edge is facing towards you. You make sure all of your layers are lined up again, and like I said. You want your first stitch going downwards through all of those sandwich layers and just double check that none have slipped back or down before you take your clip off. One, two, three, four, excuse me, one of my plugs has just fallen down. There we go, so that's that one. And again, like I said, we started this side on the other one. This side we're starting the flat side of the loop and again make sure all your layers and you're catching all of them from above one two three just make sure all of those are still lined up and your fourth one from above where the edges of the ribbons are all joining up all layered together Like that and then when we pull them together as you can see they're starting to curve into each other naturally so if you're happy you've got the combinations the right way we can take our pins out and there you go flat sides together flat sides together that's what it will look like at the moment and this is what the backs of the pieces look like. So what I do is I leave a little tail, pull mine down a little bit. And as you can see, wear a double thread. You can put your needle through the tail of there. And then pull that all nicely together. And as you can see, two creases, two creases, two creases on each piece. And what I do with this style is I go round the centre once like this. And then I also take the extra thread and go round the opposite way. And then you can also stitch off in the back. And that just pulls your pieces. It stops you getting like a, the circled centre. It pulls all the centre pieces together nicely and lines them all up. Okay. Nice 
nicely stitched off. Just re-thread the thread we've ready for the base bow in a second. And as you can see, it looks a little bit messy at the moment, but we can perk it up in just a second. Okay, do twist your loops up like this. And this is what you should have now. This is the front. And this is what the back of the bow looks like. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could just add your center at this point and attach it to your headband. And as you saw, that's the look that the pink coral version gives you. This look, like I said, if you want to add a little bit more extra, you can do the base bow. And I needed a three and a half inch um, back bow, to base bow today, and I don't have that template. I normally have my set of templates from my friend Siobhan. Again, the links are in the description below, and you can also get the plastic versions in the US from a couple of different suppliers, and again, they're in the description as well. But what I've had to do myself, because like I said, I needed this one, which was just a bit bigger than my three inch template. I needed a three and a half. So what I've done out of cardboard is I've done the measurements for three and a half inches. I've drawn that draw my sides down, cut a stitch guide which is dead centre which is the 1.75 and done a one centimetre gap and then the other thing I've done is I've taken my tape and I've just done that down the sides. So like I said if you ever want to do make a, a template and you haven't got the wooden ones making them out of cardboard is quick simple to do and not that complicated you just do it the widths that you want the templates to be. So this is a base bow and this is just a simple tail boutique so again i've heat sealed my end this is let me just check for you 48 centimeters so we're going to take our template and where our stitch guide is we want to angle that so it's just over the stitch guide and hold that with our thumb and then we're going to take this one and we want this to go straight across the back and line that over now the thing we want this is this point 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 here should be going straight down the center of the stitch guide and then take these clips i clip them across there so i can turn it and then take that straight across the back and then we take that straight over here curve that tail round so it's out of the way when we're stitching and this is the look you'll get on the front and this is the look on the back Okay. and we're going to take our thread and with this one we are going to do i believe six stitches let me just move this down a little bit because i've just just read it up a second i did it a bit too high up the template at the moment again that's better like I said thing with this make sure you triangle this side and you triangle this side hit right on the center of the stitch guide and we're going to go from above right at the beginning where the ribbon starts one two three four five watch your corner and the six one's going to be from beneath where the top edge of the ribbon is so one, two, three, four, five, six, and on the back you will have one, two, three, and as you can see the third, second one is going across the line of the two pieces. We can take our clips off now, take that apart, this is what the look of the front is, and this is the look of the back, and now we can cinch our bow together. 
Now, if you want the tail in the opposite direction, you just start the um, angle facing down that way. So wrap round, nice and tight. Stitch off in the back. However you personally prefer. And there we go. That's what the front of the bow looks like. And this is what the back of the bow looks like. And as you can see, you've got the loop dips either side. And then what I do with this one is I line my mini bow over the top of it. Make sure it's centered. And then you can wrap it, use your extra thread instead of glue. If you want to do glue instead, you can do. But I do it this way and I wrap a good few times around, super, super tight. And this holds layers together, but it stops it being bulky, which glue sometimes does. And then stitch off in the back. There we go. Decide how long you want your tail to be. I don't want it quite that long. So I'm just going to cut that down. I don't know. Can I cut it at an angle? I'm going to cut mine at an angle today instead of a curve. But you can do it however you want, as long as you heat seal the end in the blue clear bit of the flame. I think I over sealed that a little bit, so let's just crack that. That is better. So there we go, front of the bow, back of the bow, and then we're going to take our super soft baby band. I'm going to put a top touch of glue On the back here not a lot and then I always attach mine so that the curls coming towards you like so and then I've got my corresponding nine millimeter again this is in the pale gold And again, I glue that right on the centre where I've just put the glue there. And then we're going to wrap this round twice, same as normal. One. If it gets a bit met messy at this point, don't worry, we can turn the loops back in the right direction once we've tightened the middle. So do it nice and tight so we get a nice centre. There we go. Put any extra off if you need to. Don't forget to heat seal so we don't get any fraying. Make sure you don't get your nylon as well. There we go. And I want a touch of glue just across here. Now when we do this we sort of create an edge that might be going against the baby's head. So what I have is I have some soft felt here and all I'm going to do is where that bit will go across the soft bit. So this edge that I've just created with my ribbon, I'm just going to pop a piece of felt over there so that it doesn't rub against the baby's head. There we go, just a little bit. And what I like to do is make sure that that bit of felt sits inside of the curl. Like so. And then, like I said, if your loops get out of place at this point, you can twist them and adjust them so that they sit how you want them. And there you go. Super cute Laco Baby or Mini Loopy Boutique. Thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye!